Hi, so what we're going to try and do is um, pull two sessions of multi-channel, multi-session uh, images of IC1848, uh, the Sol Nebula. Um, what we're first going to do is just uh, pull in the light images one by one and find out where they are. So these were taken in March 2020. We had uh, about four days of uh, good clear skies. So pulling us some light images now. Um, got the flats here. Light, light, flats, light. Okay, so we can just uh, shift click for all these. Um, I'm sure there's going to be an issue here with the H alpha um, in that I renamed the filter in my capture software. So I'm going to pull in until light green. Uh, and then we'll pull in the second lot as we go. We'll go with the filter header tag for the time being because that should be right. Uh, these are session one. The pictures weren't all that great, um, to be honest, and um, hopefully this software um, Astro Pixel processor can um, pull out some extra detail or well, enhance the detail that um, is supposed to be there uh, in the individual frames. Um, and discard the, uh, the anomalies as such. So let's just do the H alpha separately. Um, not going to apply the filter tag there, we'll say hydrogen alpha. And uh, this is still session one. So uh, as you can see, we've got the blue session, the green session, the hydrogen alpha session. Uh, we won't do the LPS session. It's a light suppression filter, light pollution suppression filter. Um, I have a cheap filter, it's not worth it. We'll grab all the rest and we'll go with the filter header tag on those. This is session one. Oh, that's okay. So we have some uh, 10 blue, 10 green, 10 hydrogen alpha. 10 luminance, uh, some O3s, uh, red, and some sodium 2s, sodium. Uh, carry on, we've got 70 frames, so uh, let's go to session 2 now. Uh, flats, 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 lights. Uh, I'm going to do this as well because um, I think uh, Astro Pixel Processor didn't like my hydrogen space alpha or underscore alpha uh, and it wanted a lowercase a in, in my last time I tried this so we will try and do this in the same way. So I'm taking the blues and the greens, uh, apply the filter header tag from the fits. Uh, this is session two. Uh, so now we've got um, 20 blues and 20 greens, one from each session, or 10 from each session. Uh, let's just do those hydrogen alphas separately. Uh, hydrogen alpha. Let's set those to hydrogen dash alpha. Lowercase a. Okay, this is session two. Okay, uh, similarly, we grab some lights. The rest we can go with our filter header in the fits because I haven't changed those all the way through. Apply filter header tag. There we go. Once again, it's session two. Okay. 
now we've got a large number of um, exposures. These are 180 seconds at um, Unity Gain 139 on an ASI 1600mm Pro uh, camera. Now, I, I should say actually that these are all attached to an achromatic um, a telescope. So, yeah, if we get flamed for using achromatics um, as opposed to apochromatics, uh, needs must costs are quite high for apochromatics. Let's load some flaps. Um, we go back up to our first. I'm sure we've got some flaps here. Have to do the same thing with the flaps with regards to hydrogen alpha because I renamed the filter between sessions. So let's just take these flat greens. We'll go with the filter tags on those. Uh, flat, the same camera, same equipment. Um, we're going to assign all the flaps to all sessions, and there's a beneficiary from that in that um, when uh, Astro Pixel Processor uh, takes a look at flats, darks, uh, and does all its processing, it makes a different decision whether you've got 12 or 10 or 20 um, of those um, images to as to how it processes them. Uh, and if you, the more you have, the better it is. Um, anyway, so flats, we, we can assign those to all sessions because we're basically using the same equipment, um, albeit on different sessions. So let's do that. Um, okay, let's just do those hydrogen alphas separately. Flats, blues, hydrogen alpha. Chuck them in, manually specify them for those. Uh, and we're going to apply them to all sessions. Once now we go in and we can take all the flats uh, beyond hydrogen alpha. Well, once again, we're going to ignore these LPS sessions. That was an experiment of mine on the night. Um, didn't work out. Maybe I didn't particularly look at the focus for them either. And some of these are pretty bad images, to be honest with you. Um, but um, hopefully, with the number that we have, um, we can discard or at least um, give a lower weight uh, to the ones that uh, are, are not contributory to the quality of the overall image. Uh, and this is what this software does. Um, so uh, I've got all the flats there up, up until uh, sodium 2. Uh, we're going to apply the filter tag on those because that will do it. Uh, this, this flat, so all sessions. Um, great. OK, so we've got 70 flats. We've got more to add because we've got session 2. But we'll um, go into darks now. Um, this is quite easy because darks apply to all channels. Um, so they're yeah independent of whatever filter that you've had. So and it automatically will tell you all channels, which is great. Um, there and also we'll apply these to all sessions. So I've got ten darks there. I've got some bias frames. So let's use those. This is just in the first session. We'll add some more in a minute. Um, so taking some bias frames. Uh, yeah them to all channels and also apply them to all sessions. Okay, um, that's just session one. Let's do, let's go and do the same for session two. Okay, so we're back in flats again. Um, Going to do the same thing here because I think it wants me to have a lowercase a in that alpha. We'll try it anyway. We'll go. We'll do it this way. Um, the picture I have so far, I didn't do this, but um, I think it might be worth doing it this time. So we've got blues and greens. Uh, I haven't changed filter names there, so we'll go with filter tag uh, on the bits header. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to apply this to all sessions. Same equipment. 
Okay, so now we're going to go with uh, those hydrogen alpha ones, uh, manually apply it to that particular filter. Open hydrogen alpha dash alpha. Okay, and that's all settings. Uh, some more flats, we'll do the rest of the flats now. Um, and well, we may as well click that one. And then we'll just click that one again. Come back to our hydrogen alpha. I didn't do the LPS on this night because I was so disappointed with LPS. It's a really cheap filter, but I had spare space in my filter wheel, so I thought I'll put it in, give it a try. Um, yeah, and we'll go with the filter tag on that and apply it to all sessions. Oh, we've got 154 flats. Is that right? 154? Did we miss them out? Oh, we'll see. We've got plenty. We've got another set of darks here. Um, so apply those. All channels for darks. All sessions for darks. Yeah, they're all good. Bias. Take the bias out of there. Take those. All these same um, exposure, same gain, and apply those to all sessions. Pretty good. Okay, so we have, um, let's have a look at what we have. We've got a load of light frames, um, we've got a load of blue frames here. All sessions, all sessions, that's good. Uh, flats, all sessions, all sessions. All sessions. We've got loads of darks, and then we've got bias frames. That's excellent. Uh, so now we're going to just uh, create some masters that uh, we're going to then apply. Um, latest versions of Astro Pixel Processor um, have automatic now added to a lot of these. Um, in the tool tips, what you used to find was. Um, if you have so so many frames use this if you have so so many frames use that um, automatic now pretty much takes uh, care of that it the software knows how many frames you have um, and we can go down keep on going down and uh, there is something that I haven't tried yet um, which is whether to create a bad pixel map I've got pretty new cram cameras um, we will try creating a bad pixel map this time around. Um, so, yeah, we're going to create the masters and assign them to the lights. Let's uh, go ahead and do that. And um, I'll probably pause the video while it does that. Um, and you can take a look at the time at the top of the screen to see how long that actually took. Uh, but I won't waste your time waiting for it. Okay, well. That completed um, probably about five minutes or so. Um, so what we find here at the bottom is we have some new uh, master flats, master dark, and master bias. Uh, master bias for all um, all channels, master dark for all channels, uh, a master flat for each of our um, imported uh, session uh, channels. Uh, and a bad pixel map. Take a look at bad pixel map. Yeah, I mean, there are some in there. Yeah, so it's worth doing. Nothing leaves the factory um, perfect. Uh, we can see from the master flats that um, there are areas of the telescope that. Um, really must be avoided <laughs> as far as uh, each of them go along but um, they, they all look good actually master dark is fine it's, uh, it's, sh it's showing the fringing um, and the master bias less fringing um, probably just there was the noise that's the background noise um, these are taken at minus five degrees centigrade yeah. Um, so we've got our flats, uh, we've got our lights, and we've got our masters. Um, so the next thing we do is uh, go.
go through the analyze stars routine in Astro Pixel Processor. Um, now, I, what I found is that uh, if I set if I leave this set at five hundred um, for the number of stars, although I've got automatic stars target set, doesn't really go. Sol Nebula is right in the middle of the Milky Way. There are loads of stars there, um, so I did this before. 2000 I was going to set it at 3000 and see what happens um, and this is going to take a while and once again I will probably pause the video but you can um, get an indication of how long it took by looking at the time at the top of the screen okay let's do let's set up the uh, analyze stars routine okay uh, so that completed um, we can go and come and have a look maybe at the console of um, APB uh, and have a look at what it was doing. I'll just have a look at this sort of uh, last one here. Um, so essentially what it's been doing is been looking at the number of stars it's been detecting in each frame, um, detecting those uh, stars. Uh, coming to a decision on the analysis of those stars, what the FWHM reading is on those, essentially how um, tight the focus was, um, and also taking into account the number of stars that were um, detected within each frame. Um, some frames will show significantly more. Um, you need to bear in mind that I am focusing in between each filter change because I have an achromatic refractor um, so we have um, quite differing uh, numbers of stars being detected and differing quality scores but when we come to actually integrate these these scores are going to come into effect um, after they've been normalized uh, to essentially um, decide which frames we're going to integrate and what weights we're going to assign to each of those frames um, which is uh, signal is better than noise as long as noise is not more than the signal um, so yeah the next stage is registration um, and now this is pretty interesting registration I first came across it when um, working in the medical field uh, not as a medical person um, but uh, but it's, 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 a, it's an incredible uh, incredible tool um, for, for in the medical practice um, only thing, thing I think I might have to change here is the fact that it's a mosaic. Uh, we're across two sessions. Uh, first session was like a plane that was pretty pretty well aligned and, and uh, everything working, tracking was working good. Um, the first session was uh, kind of like that uh, and it was moving because it wasn't particularly well aligned. Like I say, not the, the data that you have is 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 never perfect. Um, so let's go with the mosaic registration mode just to let it know that some of those frames are going to be like well out. Um, quadrilaterals never never really change that. Uh, these we are using the same camera and the optics. Uh, no distortion model. Uh, G zero optical distortion model all these dynamic correction that we haven't saved distortion for. I have no idea, so we leave things we leave things as default unless um unless we've heard about it really. Um that goes into quite a bit of detail. We'll go with that. We'll go with the defaults. I think it worked before. So we'll start the registration. Once again, I'm going to pause the video because this will probably take some time. Um, not too long actually, but it will take some time. Um, so there we go. Uh, let's start the registration. Uh -huh. We're not. We're doing. We're doing everything from the beginning. Um, do you want to disable the same camera and optics? I think no. Um, uh, 
Uh, well, let's go. Let's change that then. Shall we cancel? And we'll go with um, go with normal and, uh, and see whether it copes. Uh, I thought mosaic might be better, but maybe not. I, <laughs> software does actually, uh, it challenges you if you try to do something a bit silly. So sometimes if you get double challenged like that, you say, okay, I'll go, go with what you say. See what happens. See you in a minute. Okay, well, that's pretty much completed. Um, These are the details. You notice it says 139 frames and we have 140. Um, the reason for that is that it's taken one of the frames as a reference frame. And, that, and because of that, for registration purposes. Registration is just where it's moving all the stars so that they line up on the frame in the same way. So that when you go to stack, that you haven't got like one stacking in a different place from the other. Um, so obviously it takes a re reference frame. Um, and... Um, uh, compares all the others and modifies all the others to fit that reference frame and I'm hoping that it somehow chooses the best frame from the analyzed stars routine. Uh, next thing is we're going to go into um, uh, normalization. Um, so yeah you, you might have thought hey, hold on just been into calibration then we do calibration. No calibration is actually or calibrate um, step two of this process is actually creating the master flats, the master darks, master bias, and the bad, um, uh, bad pixel map um, frame. Um, whereas normalization is to bring everything into the same levels so that we can integrate them properly. Um, I don't think there is much here, even though we are working with mosaic. We'll go with the normal. Um, like I say, you can fiddle around with these. You can definitely check the tooltips um, and find out whether anything is going to apply for you. Um, so, yeah, make those modifications and experiment, but um, otherwise, I think this step, I've always gone with the norms. Um, so let's go and normalize those lights. Anyone who's familiar with the software knows that it makes a really big noise when it finishes a particular, um, uh, particular section of its uh, processing. Um, so we have all these. Uh, we've got um, calibration, done the star, done the registration, gotten it's all normalized. Um, we can uh, now pretty much start to take a look at um, things such as our quality on our frames. Uh, and we have quality scores and they range from hmm, yeah, 2, 269, 2, 2. Some are really, really low uh, and some are pretty high. Ah, well, luminance is always pretty good. Um, lets a lot of light pass. Uh, these are quite kind of sort of relative within their own channels. Um, but as you can see, we have some pretty poor frames there. But we're going to leave them in. We're going to leave them in because um, hopefully everything's going to be sorted out in the final integration. Um, we'll go with uh, automatic integration. It essentially means because we've got more than uh, 20 frames per um, channel, um, we're going to be using average, which is far better than medium, um, in my experience, short-term experience, having said that. Um, so we're going to integrate for channel, let's integrate for channel and all, which means um, that not only will it do all the channels, it will then also produce an integration result for um, all channels combined, seeing, seeing as they've all been registered together, you may as well do that. You get it's like a super luminance um, issue, uh, a diagram, a picture. Um, but um, 
that may give you uh, an indication of, of, of where you're going uh, and, and exactly what you what you've got. Um, so there is uh, something here that we need to do um, because it is kind of like a mosaic. Um, I think we're going to put first degree LNC with three LNC algorithms in there, um, and I think we're going to enable MBB. So MBB is essentially what it's going to do is because I've got bands of I've got different sets of images at different orientations. So there's going to be a band there um, where it's um, going to be quite pronounced. That's obviously a stack of photos there, and that's obviously a stack of photos there, and you've just glued them together. So what MBB is going to do is uh, just um, essentially try and meld those together so it's not so, such a pronounced um, border between a couple of images. And this is actually quite a large um, overlap, um, so I'm going to go with 10%. Um, this is my first first experiment with this that particular tool, um, but something we're going to do. Um, I'm going to go with the defaults and open else, I think. Uh, we've enabled the local normalization correction as well. Uh, let's go and integrate. This may take a while. Uh, I would say, yeah, it's going to ask me this. Um, because I'm doing this uh, LNC, uh, it's saying for that final one where I want to bring all channels together, um, am I going to want to um, provide the same same algorithm uh, attributes like I did for each individual channel. I have no idea, so I'm going to click yes. Uh, what's the name of the IC object? Well, it's IC1848, the sole nebula. Let's see what you come up with. See you in a minute. Right, yeah, finally we're back. Um, okay, so... Um, it's, uh, it's built some files um, with individual channels. We have the first one there. And you can see how, how the, uh, the mosaic was, was in place. Um, and you can also see how the software has somehow tried to fade away the bounds between um, the frames. Um, this is blue, is it? Because that would be the worst. Uh, let me just have a look. Blue would be the worst, I think. Um, this is a. Oh, that's a combination of all. That's our green frame. Hydrogen alpha. It's always, always such a perfect thing to see, isn't it? Um, just go with our luminance. O3. See a little bit of uh, nebulosity in that. Red showing a, a bit there as well. Uh, and you can see some um, three. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way that's turned out, considering what this would have looked like. Um, over over two sessions, um, these frames are are pretty. Yeah, they're okay. They're okay. Uh, good enough anyway for us to move on. When we come to tools. Um, now, uh, these are kind of sort of um, split into three. I think uh, batch modify, batch rotate, correct vignetting. Um, one of one one set um, got removed light pollution calibrate background and calibrate star colors which will be done in a second in a, in a sort of one two three step um, I think the first thing we'll do is combine HDV uh, might take a look at HSL selective color but yeah, have a look. let's combine a RGB first um, so we need to add channels uh, it would have saved our files. Some of these files are 2.2 gig in size now because of um, the integration and stuff. So yeah, bear in mind, bear that in mind. Um, when you 
comes to this. Not my working folder. That's an open working folder. Let's cancel that. App is eighteen one eight for one. It should be there. Which I am. Ah, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's my source folders. So let's go to documents app. I see. Yeah. Uh, so our masters are all called this. They should have the correct. Um, filters assigned to them now, so it'll be add channel uh, blue, blue, yes, that's correct. Uh, blue, green, hydrogen is going to put in as luminance, which is absolutely fine. It's like a super luminance for us. Green is green, hydrogen alpha, hydrogen alpha, that's good. Luminance also luminance O3 as O3. Red is red. Ah, uh, did I say silicon before? It's sulfur too. Yeah, sulfur. Okay, so we got all these. Uh, uh, let's just have a look at LRGB. To start with, I fiddle around with these because um, obviously this isn't including um, any of the um, O2 stuff. Uh, Certainly not. No hydrogen alpha. Let's have a look at, for instance, a, a Hubble. Um, when you change this, you have to click on new formula to reset these values, and then you can like, twiddle with them as, you, as much as you like. Um, let's go with a Hubble. Uh, yeah, another green Hubble um, composite. Let's go with Nature So One. Have a look. And we'll start to get some detail there through. And what we will do is um, do some processing to sort out the background and, and things on here. Um, but what we do want to find is something that really uh, brings out all the detail that we can save as a composite. Once again, that's a bit green for me. lacking in substance. It's this is uh, an aesthetic thing for most people. Um, how you come to choose these. You can fiddle around with this as well over here. Um, this will change the, uh, the stretching um, offsets and bases. Uh, and extend that to maybe assist you to find something that's a bit better for the picture that you're looking at. I'm just trying to find something that brings brings it out a bit more. Let's try this one. I mean, you'd be surprised what you can bring out with uh, tools like GIMP afterwards. That's awful. I'm sure I found something really good before. And that might find it. I was hoping to find something that was include a few more um, channels. Yeah, that's just to I would have thought that would have produced a pretty good image. It may just be that it's not. Well, 
Well, let's play around with this because um, we don't like the green. Green is uh, not particularly nice. Uh, and it's not green itself, but it's the fact that hydrogen alpha is being displayed as green. So let's take that out and replace that with red. Uh, and then find out which of our um, narrow bands was actually being displayed as green. None of them. So let's just recalculate for that. Let's see. Okay. Um, background looks a bit poor at the moment. Um, what I'm going to suggest is maybe we take I think maybe we'll go with that um, and we'll, we'll do some more phrase processing to, to sort out the background and then maybe pull it into GIMP, GIMP um, to uh, sort out so let's save that as combined RGB oh, I think I didn't do that Maybe I did. Uh, yeah, something annoying about this. Uh, I have saved it. Right, okay, let's go back. So we've got combine RGB. So the first thing we're going to do here is do the remove light pollution. And yes, I want to do it on that one. So the. Um, advice here is that we do this by um, essentially not selecting areas of nebulosity so we're just gonna that's quite nebulous anyway so sometimes they'll ask you to enable saturation um, and fiddle about the saturation here um, I'm not going to do that because I think I can see most of the nebulosity in this picture um, so we're going to just sort of go up here and we're going to select something up here, something down here, there. I'm doing quite large sections um, and the reason for that is that this is a mosaic. Uh, so it's going to have a complex, um, a complex map of um, complex map of um, light pollution because it's been taken you know at, at one orientation second lobe has been taken at another um, so that's why I've increased the flexibility there is just sort of just to allow it to sort of say yeah this could be quite a warped map because there'd be a all, all the um, <clears throat> All light pollution that is down here is actually going to be reproduced down here because that's the nature of the light pollution in my area. Um, so I need to give it a bit more flexibility. Um, we might pull this through a couple of iterations. And it's unfortunate that I have not been able to... Um, I'm not going to choose anything in this area here because it's 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 conflicting area between this and that. So this here is actually over here there. So it's it, it wouldn't be a good idea to try and correct that at this stage, I don't think. Um got quite a few there. Let's just do a calculation on that. And I haven't framed this picture so well. Um so ideally you would have a nebulous area in the centre of your picture and be able to choose areas all around it. Um, not able to do that with this because there is no velocity over here. Um, let's just try choosing some very small areas um, which don't contain no velocity on that side. Um, I'll just be able to add a few there. Let's remove the red ones. That have, uh... Okay, so the red ones are the ones that where, where it's saying that the um, the model is not being able to kind of sort of match the the light pollution um, uh, frame that is calculated 
Um, so take them out of the calculation. I think those are probably good ones to take out of the calculation. So we'll recalculate on these with, with just a couple over here. Um, it may pull these up as yellow. Nothing. Yellows are candidates for removal. Reds are recommendations for removal. Yeah, it's taken that one out. That one, I don't really know why it's taken out, but just replace it with a couple of small ones in the same area, kind of sort of even it out. I'm going to cheat there. I'm just going to put a couple more in here. In these areas where it's slightly less nebulosity, that's probably a bad idea, but we'll give it a go. Okay, let's just try to reduce the flexibility and see whether that goes any better or worse. I think there's a glass wall in the corner. What I'm doing is uh, appraisals. Yeah, it didn't like that one. We'll remove the red. Let's recalculate that. That's far too in between all nebulosity um, for it to calculate. It doesn't like a lot of these up here either, but that's mostly because um, this is a different frame and these are being, being affected by that. Okay, uh, it's starting to not like that, but um, I think that's far better than what we started with. So we're going to OK and save that. And let's uh, put a suffix on here for um, LPC. And it seems to also put a suffix in for CBG, although we're going to do that next. There you see the sound that um, this tool makes. I'm not sure what else it is there. So we're going to calibrate the background. It's a similar thing, really. Um, just going to certain areas. Uh, mostly background. Try to avoid bright stars I think. Um, and kind of just bring things in. It's giving it a... Um, the areas come into consideration and you're giving it a, a map to be able to take those areas into consideration and then apply it as a whole to the image as, to the Im to the image as a whole. Um, yeah, we'll give that a go. Calculate that. Okay, well... mind that this is um, not being edited in a we can bring a lot of detail out with a tool like GIMP and do some overall aesthetic sort of level changes We're really working on a, a sort of more saturated image. Let's save that and um, and then this is interesting. So now this time, although I've done the LPC, it's come up and it's asked me where I'm set, saving it as CBG without the LPC. So I think that maybe that's a, maybe that's an issue there. Load that. Yeah, so that's the one we've just been working on. And this is the original that we had before. Kind of overlooks there. Might just be that I've reduced the um, thing. Uh, okay, let's calibrate star colors. Not a tool I've used very much, but um, I'm intrigued about it. Um, 
but now seeing this done they've essentially just selected the entire the entire frame so what we'll actually do is choose the frame obviously I'm going to avoid these areas choose areas of the frame almost the entire frame but any of the sort of the areas that we haven't been cropped we should try calculating on that I don't know how to interpret these results too well. It's interesting that um, I've got some overlapping boxes there as well. I wonder how, how it's going to uh, take that. So in various iterations of... Okay. Um, well, yeah, it's kind of sort of... It's kind of sort of normalised background, hasn't it? As well as... Um, Let's just add that one there. So I notice this. We're starting to see that border again now. So let's just recalculate with that in place and see whether it's. Uh, is that, I mean, it looks certainly something that we can pull a certain amount of detail out with, aesthetic detail out with, um, with a tool like GIMP. So I might just continue doing after this we'll save it as a save it as a tiff and see how it goes. I should much save it as a well, see see how big it is. Okay well it's not really made that much difference to that area. Um, that's uh, okay and save. Okay, so now it's saving it as calibrated background with um, the star calibration. So that's what we So that's this one here. Which seems to be the same picture as before. Oh no, okay. No, that's just it. it loaded it. It's the one in memory. Okay. Okay, let's save this. Um, CBG CSC ST as a fix. So now what uh, we'll do is we'll try again and see whether we can just um, pull out some of those details. Um, so this is the latest one. This VST. And yeah, it's, it's great, isn't it? Um, so GIMP opens it and it opens it upside down. I don't know why. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not particularly 100% on this one. Actually, it's not opened it inside uh, upside down. It's opened it left to right, hasn't it? It's, um, well, interesting. So yeah. So that's what we were looking at before. That's interesting. Uh, so we're just going to do the normal level stuff. Um, that's interesting. Oh yeah, because uh, we're just going to do some darkness in there. And add some lightness. Uh, curve just gonna bring some stuff out here uh, we're just gonna do this quite quickly now because I didn't intend to 
do much in this video with GIMP to be honest with you, I'm not an expert at GIMP, so this is basically what I just normally do. Um, fiddle about until we find something a bit more. You know, this isn't isn't the perfect for it. say the original data I could spend a lot more time trying to um, get everything into focus I'm not particularly happy but why not so croaky brightness for nothing. We're just uh, yeah. That's way too oversaturated and not to my liking. And I'm not uh, I'm not the expert. said that it isn't it's not some random drawing that just come out produced given the um, the original data I think it's come out pretty good Yeah, so my wife popped in, so she's going to bed. So, um, so I just brought back um, that image that we were doing in GIMP that brought out all that sort of it's a bit saturated, but and obviously it's it's um, brought in our pieces here that show that this is not this has not been um, calibrated correctly. The correct way of doing this would normally be that you would build each mosaic um, individually um, and then kind of sort of merge them um, as integrate, pre integrated. And we've not done that, so we've done it in a slightly different way. In either case, um, uh, depending on um, your uh, tolerance. For, um, for what you're seeing through the telescope and whether something is beautiful or not. I think we've uh, ended up with something pretty nice. Um, I did want to have a look at the HSL selective color um, and let's see whether we can do any uh, modifications in that uh, with regards to um, reducing. So uh, this has changed in recent versions, so um, it's now got an indication that sort of red is to the left and cyan is to the right, green to the left, magenta to the right, uh, and blue, yellow, so uh, the opposites uh, across the color scale. Um, and we can also reduce or uh, saturation the luminance uh, and perform calculations uh, on this in, in general um, with those modifications. And it just gives you an option to, um, for instance, if you feel that is too red, just bring it down a little. Um, and if your image, you feel that it's got a certain amount of green in it, take that down as well. Oh, sorry, I'm actually making it more red and more green. Sorry, um, should make that point. So if you push it towards cyan, uh, it's pretty green there. 
So we want to reduce the redness. You can see a slight reduction there, um, and you can uh, also change these here, um, whether you affect the background when you do that, um, so that you can leave the background in place um, and yet yeah, still change the tone of the nebulosity. So within a certain level, if, if there isn't that much light here on a certain pixel, and it won't alter it, but if it is a bright a bright pixel, then it will alter it. Um, so you can just adjust a sort of certain hues. And I think this is actually quite a intuitive way of um, going about to modify uh, an image um, without necessarily affecting. There's certainly astrophotography images without necessarily affecting um, the overall. Uh, balance of the background, um, so it's, got, it's, it's, it's quite a good thing. I've tried the luminosity and saturation, I'll just take that and you can bring down the saturation a lot and see, see what, what that causes. Nothing at all. Or was I only editing that one? Let's just try that. Like I say, it's a tool I've not used that much um, within this software. Uh, I recommend you give it a go. That's it, I'll go. Um, could have ended up with a better picture, but generally better focusing and um, better um, care in um, alignment uh, and also, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, better equipment will help you a long way. But this tool goes a long way to bringing out the detail in, in what you can get. Like I say, this was done with uh, an achromatic refractor telescope. Um, so I'm uh, quite impressed with uh, the results of the software. Um, I'm sure with a lot more fiddling I could get much, uh, a, a much better quality result. But uh, I'm quite happy with that actually. Uh, see you all.